Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate two methods for working a German short row heel with a complementary color, contrasting color heel. This method is the standard method for doing a German short row heel and this is my improved method for avoiding the stripe over here but getting the exact same results over here. There are times when you might want to use this, but sometimes you don't want to have that stripe, and that's why I'm making this video. I have another video on just German short row heel. I'll link it up in the corner here that's all in one color, so you're not doing it in two colors if you prefer to see that. I worked these socks over 42 stitches uh, so that I could get 21 in the heel, but you can work this over any number of stitches. The method I'm showing here will work for any number of stitches. So this I'm going to call method number one and this I'm going to call method number two. So let's orient ourselves to what's going to be happening here. I have my sock on two circular needles. This portion of the sock is going to be worked as the heel. This portion down here is going to be worked as the instep. So you can see I have these stitches for the heel are on this needle down here. And the stitches for the instep are on this needle up here. You will never work from one needle to the other. You will always work the instep needle, the tips together, and the tips for the heel needle will we work together. So when you're working the heel, when we have the heel needle up in action like this, we're ready to work the heel, the instep needle will just be hanging down. It will be, we won't be using it at all. We'll only be using the heel needle and vice versa. When we first start out, we're going to start right on the heel and we want to end our main color to the left edge of the heel. Once we are sure that we have the main color ending at the left side of the heel stitches, we're going to mar want to mark where we're going to work our German short row uh, section. I have 21 stitches here and generally you divide it into thirds so it would be 7, 7, and 7. In the event, let's say you have 22, you would do 7, 8, 7. If you had 23, you would do 8, 7, 8, like that. So you want them divided and we're going to put a marker after the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And after the second seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And make sure that we have seven remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So the stitches between the markers are the ones that will not have short rows worked. We're going to work first by starting a right side row and we'll work all the way over to here and do a German short row turn here and then we'll work over to here, do a German short row turn back and forth until we've used all these stitches on the outside of the markers. So here we go. Let's start. We're going to start uh, using our contrast color and we're going to leave a little tail here. In the event that we have a hole there, we can always use the tail to secure the hole. We're going to try to avoid having a hole. So we're just going to knit to the end of the needle. We're going to slip the markers as we come to them. We're just knitting to the end of the needle. Okay, we're coming up on the end of the needle. We knit to the very last stitch, including the last stitch. We turn the work. Now that last uh, main color stitch is loose because it's attached to the working yarn so we can, don't worry about it, we can tighten it up later. Now we're going to make our first double stitch. We just width the yarn to the front and it's the same whether you're on a right side row or a wrong side row. It's always the same with the yarn to the front, always to the front. Slip the stitch point to point, take the yarn over the top and move the stitch to the right needle. For a wrong side row, now you bring the yarn to the front and you purl to the point where you want to make the next double stitch. 
and that is at the end of the needle for this row. Okay, we're coming up on the end of the row. We're going to work to the very last stitch, including it. This is the first row, and that's where we started our new color, the contrast color. So that stitch is going to be a little bit loose. We can just tighten it up, and we can tighten it up more later. We turn our work. Now we're ready to do a right side row. Again, as I said before, you bring the yarn to the front, always to the front for a double stitch. Slip the stitch point to point, take the yarn over the top, and pull it a little bit. That's a double stitch. You can see both legs. And we're going to knit up to the next double stitch, not including the double stitch. So that double stitch will be at the end of the row. We'll knit over to it. Okay, here we come up to the double stitch. We can see it right there where there's two legs. We're not going to knit into that. We'll knit up to it. There's the one double stitch. We turn the work with the yarn in the front, slip the stitch point to point, take the yarn over the top of the needle, under the needle to the front, and we're going to purl over to the next double stitch. Okay. We can see we can see our double stitch here. So we're going to work up to it, but not work it. There's the double stitch. We're going to turn the work with the yarn forward, slip the stitch, take the yarn over the top, and we have a double stitch. We're going to work up to the next double stitch. Now, so you can see now we have two double stitches. We're going to continue going back and forth until we have seven double stitches on each side, and that will be all the stitches up to the marker on each side will be a double stitch. We'll finish this row and I'll make one more double stitch to show you and then I'll finish the section off screen and be back. Okay, we're coming up to, we have our previous two double stitches there. You can see the sets, the pairs, they cross at the top. We're going to work up to them. Then we're going to turn the work with the yarn forward, slip take the yarn over the top, and then continue. And I'll be back once I finish this section. Okay, I'm now ready to make my very last double stitch. I have one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. Still remaining seven stitches between the needles. I'm gonna do my last a double stitch for this half of the heel turn. There's the double stitch. I'm going to slip the marker, work the seven stitches in the center of the heel. Slip the marker. Now I'm going to work these double stitches as if they are knit stitches. So I'm just going to knit across each double stitch as if it's one stitch. Now you can't really do a double stitch on top of a double stitch. This is why you have to do the German short row heel this way. Like if I turn to that, I just knitted that stitch and I went to turn it and do a double stitch, it does not look good. Try it yourself, you'll find out. Now here is where our working yarn, our main color is attached, so that was a loose stitch. We'll just tighten it up a little bit. Work that as a double stitch. Now we're done with the heel needle temporarily, so we'll Put this needle onto the cable. We turn the work to the instep needle. We have our working yarn here. We're going to pick up the contrast color yarn. We're sliding the instep stitches up onto the needle. Now the heel needle will be hanging down and we will not be working with that or with the main color. We're working strictly with the contrast color. We're going to knit across the instep with the contrast color and we're pulling it tight here between the two needles so we don't have a, a gap there. So we've worked across the instep. 
we turn and we pull the instep to the cable. We're no longer on the needle. We turn the work, the whole sock, not the row, and now we're on the heel side. We're going to pull that needle up into action. And with the contrast color, not the tail, put the tail down inside. With our working yarn, which is the contrast color coming from the instep there, no tails in between, we're going to work these double stitches as knits. We're just going to knit across one, two, three, six, seven. To the mark. So now we've worked all of our double stitches. Traditionally, when you do a German short row heel, you also knit around one more time, and we're going to do that because simply it makes the next section of the double stitches look better. Okay, that was the end step. We're back to the heel needle, still with the contrast color yarn. We're going to pull the heel needle up into action. The end step will be hanging down. We're going to work over to the first position for our next turn, which is going to be right here. So we're going to go here, 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 and make lengthening short rows for the second half of the heel. So we're just going to knit. Up to the marker. Slip the marker. Work to the second marker. You heal my needles dangling. Slip the marker, work the first stitch, turn, make a double stitch. Slip. Now you can take the marker off. You're not going to need it anymore. Work to the next marker. Take the marker off, work the next stitch, turn, make a double stitch, work to the previous double stitch, and you can see it, it's easy to see the double stitch, there's the double stitch, work the double stitch, Work the next stitch, turn your work. Make a double stitch, work up to and including the previous double stitch, work the double stitch, work one more stitch, turn with the yarn forward, make a double stitch and you'll continue in this fashion working the double stitch at the end of the row and then working an extra stitch turning the work creating a double stitch until you've worked all of the stitches and I'll continue doing that and I'll be back here in a minute okay so I finished the second half of the heel and uh, my working yarn is over here, the contrast color is here, and I need to do my last double stitch here. So I'm going to work, this is my very last row in the contrast color. So I'm going to work my double stitch, work all the way to the end of the row on this needle. And then we'll continue knitting in the round with the main color. 
Here's our last double stitch to work on this side. Now, at this point, we can break the yarn, the contrast color. So, it's convenient because when we started, we started on this side and we ended on this side. So, inside our sock, we're going to have a strand that's available for weaving in a hole if there's one on that side and one on this side if we have holes. It's just good to know. So we're going to move to the instep needle and, and we're going to carry on with the main color of the yarn. And we're going to work across all these stitches and then we'll continue in the round. And I'll do that for a few rounds and I'll be back and we'll take a look at our work. Okay, so here we have the finished traditional method of working the German shirt row heel with the two rounds that go across the end step. And I'm gonna show you how to weave in the end. So you see we got a little bit of a hole here not so much over here, but let's take a look at these and then I'll also show you how to adjust the stitch size. So remember I said we have these um, ends, we have one on each side that we can use if necessary to hide the hole. So we're going to do that. I'm going to thread this onto a tapestry needle. And the best way to hide a hole for this particular fabric we don't want to weave the tail in this way because that's not going to hide that hole. We're going to want to weave the tail. See when we pull it across this way how it pulls this stitch right here that it's going through. It pulls it over and kind of closes the hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to just duplicate stitch over the green this is standard duplicate stitch. I'm just following the previous green yarn that's going across the end step. And you'll do that for three or four stitches. Doesn't take very much. I'm doing it for two and a half here actually. Well, let's do it a full three. And we'll trim that off. You can leave about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to, the hole was right here. Let's look at that. I'm going to put my finger there. Now it's gone. So that worked pretty good. The other side, we don't really have a hole, but we're going to weave in the yarn tail the same way because I just think that looks better. and it gives you a second chance to see it. So we're just going to duplicate stitch. We'll follow this one right here because we want it to go over the green. You want to keep it about the same tension as the stitches you're going over. Don't pull it tighter. It's better to have it too loose than too tight. If you pull it too tight, then it's evident on the right side of the fabric. This is pretty invisible. Now another thing I want to show you is sometimes you end up with um, some enlarged stitches from manipulating the yarn. This side actually looks pretty good. This stitch right here looks... See the space here? I don't really care for that. So I'm going to try to close that up. And what I can do is I can pull on this leg here. And that goes over to here. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just moving that excess yarn over into the stitches that are neighboring. It's okay to do this. It's okay. Here's some more here. It's okay to manipulate your stitches. That looks better. Over here these look pretty good. 
Okay, so that's how you finish off. This is the one with the standard um, German short row heel. So for method two, you work exactly the same as method one up to the point of working your very last double stitch prior to working over to the end step. Up to this point, it's exactly the same. So we're going to work our double stitch, slip the marker, work our seven center heel stitches, and slip the marker. Now we're going to work each one of the double stitches, just as we did before. Work them as knits. Split that one. Till we come to the end of the needle. Now for method one, at this point we just switch to the end step needle and continued knitting in the uh, contrast color. We worked all of these double stitches, another round of run, uh, contrast color over the instep, and we ended here before starting the second half. In method two, what we're going to do is bypass that. We're going to work onto the instep needle. We're going to bring our stitches up into play on the instep needle but we're not going to work them. We're just going to do a short row, wrap and turn on the first stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the first stitch to the right needle point to point, move the contrast color from back to front, move this stitch back point to point, and slide these stitches back onto the instep needle. Then we're going to turn, pull the heel stitches up into play onto the needle, onto the heel needle, And we're going to pull this tight here so that we have that. There's no stretching out of this yarn right here. We want it tight. And we're going to purl to the second marker. Across these stitches. This is the same as working the second round on method one. This would be the second pass over these stitches. The first pass was when we worked the double stitches as knits. Now we're purling, but if we were working in the round, these would be the knits. We're going to slip the marker. And we're going to purl all of these double stitches instead of knitting them. We're going to purl these. And come to the end of the needle. We're going to put these on the cable. Again, we're going to pull up the instep stitches onto their cable, onto their needle. With the contrast color yarn, which is here, the working yarn, the contrast color yarn, we're going to slip that stitch point to point, bring the contrast color yarn from the back to the front, slip this back, slide these back to the cable, turn the work to the heel needle. So when we purled across those um, double stitches, that was the same as the first pass. Now we're going to do the second pass. We're going to make sure this is tight here. 
And now we're just going to continue the second half of the heel. And then I'll show you how to conceal those wraps once you've finished the heel. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We've finished the second half of the feel, heel. It's the exact same as the first, minus the stitches going across the instep. So we're going to take these stitches to the cable. We're going to um, break the contrast color yarn. We're not going to use it anymore. We're going to bring the instep stitches up onto the instep needle. And we're going to get the white yarn. We're getting our main color yarn here from where we left it before. And we have our first stitch here that has the wrapped stitch around it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the right needle under the wrap through the stitch, bring the new stitch through both and off the needle and that throws that wrap to the back. We're going to pull this yarn tight. We're going to knit across the instep. Okay, we're coming up on the next wrapped stitch. We can see we're going to go under the wrap, slip the last stitch as if to knit, put them both back on the left needle and knit them through the back and that will throw the wrap to the back. Then we have one last thing to do and that is to finish this last double stitch that we did on the heel. We have this last double stitch and we're just going to knit that as a single stitch and we will continue the sock. And I'll show you in a minute how to finish it off. So here we have the finished second method. And I do believe this is my original innovation, but I'm sure somebody else has figured it out before, but I just haven't seen it. But it looks exactly the same as this. It has the same number of rows from here to here. You just don't have the stripe going around the end step. So let me show you how to use the ends to weave in here also. So we're going to, let's look at both sides. Neither side really has a hole but we can see we have a little bit of an enlarged white stitch right here and that was the one that was wrapped and it just got pulled to the side a little bit so it made it a little bit big. This one over here looks fine. So let's weave in the ends here. We have our green ends to weave in and we're going to weave them over the white believe it or not. But if we do it correctly it will not show through to the front. Again, we're just going to follow in the same direction that it would have gone naturally. So we're just going to go this way and you just have to stay on the wrong side surface. Don't dig deeper. Just stay on the wrong side of the stitches. Pull it about the same or looser than the stitches you're duplicate stitching over. and we'll trim that off. And We'll take a look at the other side to see if it shows through. It's right here. I'm putting my finger on it. You can see it a little bit, but I think that's okay. If I stretch it, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty much invisible. Let's do the other side. Let's see it's coming here and let's just go here with it and then I'll show you how to fix that enlarged white stitch too. You're just duplicate stitching. And these will not come out. I can guarantee it. They will not come out. I'll show you. If we go like this, 
See, it doesn't move. Does not move, does not change. And those look good too. Now we have this enlarged white stitch and we can do the same thing. We can just pick up that excess yarn, pull it into the neighboring stitch and just move it along and let it be absorbed in the stitches to the side. That looks okay. So these look exactly the same, except this one does not have a stripe. And as I showed you at the beginning, some designs have this incorporated into the overall stitch pattern, and some don't, and you may want to use this without going over the end step. If you like my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and feel free to share my videos with your friends, and come back and watch some more. Happy knitting!